Welcome to Die Trying. Why buy when you can make? I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Michael Han. We have a whole bunch of cool stuff for you. Happy New Year's. Hey. Happy New Year's. Oh, actually, we <laughs> spent all week together in Las Vegas. It's uh, been a very busy New Year's for us so far. Like 20,000 videos. If you, if you want to see what was cool at CES 2014, techzilla.com or youtube.com slash techzilla. Comment yes. down below. At techzilla is the place to tweet at us. But a question we keep getting on techzilla and here on, uh, on Die Trying is how to use a multi-tester, or multi-meter, or volt ohm meter, or volt ohm ammeter, or... It has a lot of names, depending on the functions it can do, right? I'm gonna call it a multi-meter. Multi-meter is done. That's what we're calling it. Classic tool for makers, whether you're doing you know, electronics, whether you're repairing things, fixing things, working on your car, um, working on your house, multi-meters allow you to do, well, they measure. They mm -hmm. meter things. Yeah, I don't have too much experience with these other than I know you can stick them on batteries and they tell you how many volts there are. A matter That's of fact, about as, as intricate as I've gone. So if we look at the face of this multimeter right here, um, there's a big old knob for switching. This right here, where you see the solid line and the dotted line over the V, that is direct current DC, the stuff you get out of batteries. Uh, the one with the squiggly line, the tilde over the V, is alternating current or AC, the stuff you get from the walls. Um, and then over here we can measure ohms. And this is a manual multimeter in the sense that it does not auto range. You want to set the range of the voltage you are looking for. It also does not do amperage. So this one does volts okay. and ohms. It is old school. Okay. And then they also have analog ones, right? Yeah. Right. It's the 21st century, get a digital readout. If you want to be old school, or you know, if you want to incorporate it into a project, because it's really cool to see the get needle Get that going. hipster vibe. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. I look, you know what? Hold that thought. He does this a lot. I understand the allure of analog gauges. That's what that is. I've Even seen that box for the past five years under the Texilla desk. Have you never once opened it? <laughs> no. Pandora, you are not. So this is like this is like an old military surplus uh, voltage, DC voltage uh, meter. It is beautiful, it is magnificent, it is made like things should still be made but aren't. Um, but also, um, this meter, while accurate, is not nearly as accurate as what's made today. Uh, okay. I love analog gauges. They're amazing, they're cool, they're fun, they're exciting. They're also really difficult to read, especially if it's moving a lot. Got it. Um, matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why I bought a fancy Fluke multi-tester is I was fixing uh, my truck and I needed something that would tell me whether what the maximum minimum range a sensor was reporting, probably an oxygen sensor. Okay. So this one actually will tell you the minimum and maximum. So as it's fluctuating faster than the eye could see, I could hit a button and it would tell me the max. Fancy. Yeah. Well, That's basically, cool. if the meter isn't, if the sensor wasn't working correctly, it would just give me one single voltage because it was working correctly. I saw the full range, so I knew it wasn't that particular sensor. So if we want to measure resistance, we can just turn it to the ohms, right? Exactly. That's that's what they're there for. I'm going to actually use the alligator clips that are already. What are you doing? <laughs> you measuring the resistance of your battery pack? I was trying it, dude. Well, it's okay. So we want to hold that up. This electromagnet yeah. we were playing around with a long time ago, and I can connect it to here, and that will give me a readout of 0.7 ohms resistance. So I don't know if that's good or not. Well, it depends on what you. <laughs> <laughs> In this case, I, I will honestly say I have very rarely actually used uh, the ohm measurements or resistance measurements. The only thing I can think of it being useful, at least for me, is if I need to use a resistor and I want to find what specific <laughs> resistor, resistor this is without figuring out the color coding. Or if the resistor is properly resisting, if yeah. you know the color coding in the well, own we value. we could probably do fun things like... How much I... resistance does Michael generate? Yeah. Can you wipe those off before you hand them back to me yeah. here? Why don't you hold on to those? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, my tongue is like 50. So we, should, 50 we can ohms. measure one last thing. Actually, let me grab, uh, I'll take the... I'll take them both, if you get me sick. So one last thing we will measure, we'll measure amperage. So amperage, unlike the other things, um, so you just connect the leads to the battery or the leads to the resistor uh -huh. to measure voltage or uh, the ohms of resistance, right? But when we are measuring amperage, we need to actually put it in the circuit, right? So it has to be part of the circuit. So it goes okay. from you know, the battery to the light to the end cap, which we are gonna replace. Instead of using the little end cap on this flashlight, we are going to use the meter to sort of, uh, well, we're gonna insert the meter in the circuit, and that's gonna give us the measurement in amperage, at least if I turn it to the amperage setting. And so at the high setting, we're drawing like, yeah, about one amp. 
at the highest light setting on this one. So it's also a really bright. So if I do the low setting, 0.13, and the blinking setting is just gonna drive me insane. Cool, that seems super useful because like I'm planning on making my own battery soon and mm -hmm. I can get volts pretty easily, but it's amps that I can't really measure right now and amps are important for actually driving the circuit. Yeah, well, and they also are really important if you're trying to figure out how much, how fast you're going to consume the life of a battery. Is there any place that we can learn more about in-depth stuff on multimeters and electronics sort oh, of things. Oh my goodness, there's so many places. I, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I did not, there, that was not a pun, it was not <laughs> me. Um, using your meter available at Radio Shack stores, okay. basically it's an entire book about using uh, multimeters or voltometers. And then SparkFun, which is one of the most incredible websites on the planet if you're a maker and work with electronics. They're inspirational, they are amazing, mm -hmm. they sell parts, they sell kits, they sell tools. Um, if you go to uh, learn.sparkfun.com slash tutorial slash how to use a multimeter. It is freaking awesome. Awesome. And it's free and it's on the internet. So, hey, well, I guess it's not free because you pay for the internet, but close enough. Close enough. We'll call that free. Okay. So, since you're already looking at books, why not check out an audiobook from Audible? Uh, if you want to hear something amazing, the Feynman Lectures on Physics, Volume 14, Feynman on Electricity and Magnetism, Part 1. Um, it's incredible. It's like six hours. Uh, you can get it with your audible.com membership. It is fantastic. I am an audible.com member. Instead of just listening to music, not that that's bad, you can actually educate yourself or, or listen to a novel while you're working on a project. Audiblepodcast.com slash DIY for a free audiobook of your choice. Well, let's let's wrap up with a few things and then we're gonna kind of close on safety. So right now, like this is the two mega ohm setting here and you notice we're getting no measurement on here. Mm. With a manual, uh, Multimeter, what you need to do is kind of start high and go low if you don't know the range you're looking for. And right about the 2000 ohm, 200 ohm, boom, I'm actually getting like a 0.8 ohm measurement on our, our electromagnet. Um, and okay. the same thing goes for, for, you know, voltage. Like this is some ridiculous, you know, 20 volts, 200 volts, 600 volts. Does it damage the, the tester at all if you're too low when you're doing high current? That, I, I, would, I would start high and work low, but yes, okay. there's some cases where you could read the manual that comes with your multimeter, but yeah, in some cases you could do damage. There are fuses inside of these to try to minimize the damage you do, and generally you don't want to measure um, ohms of resistance off a powered circuit, at least that's what I was taught, um, mm. but it's kind of funny. I'm pretty sure I did that. Here, hold this, hold that, uh, put the black tip down there so we measure some voltage, and like the voltage isn't showing up here, but again, 600, Barely showing up at 200, but 20, we get a nice clear 1.4 volts for that battery. Um, I, I didn't use the word when we were talking about measuring amperage before, but essentially your meter needs to be in series, uh, as in part of the circuit, I said part of the circuit like nine times. Yes. Um, but that if I'm using fancy electrical language that is in series in the circuit. Here's the thing though, know the values of your multimeter. Don't touch things that you don't want to light your face on fire or melt you, um, you know what I mean? Like, so putting it into the electrical sockets to make sure you're getting 120 volts isn't the best Something idea. I do regularly, probably not the brightest thing to do <laughs> if you're not comfortable with it. Well, you okay. laugh, right? But if you know, if I if I put this in series, because let's say I want to measure the amperage draw on the starter motor on my diesel engine, mm -hmm. right? It's gonna melt these wires and probably fry my multimeter and potentially start a fire. Maybe Makes sense why your 10 amp <laughs> fuse was burst before. I've never no, burnt no, out. <laughs> nothing to do with actually. This is why you don't loan out your <laughs> tools to strangers, right? Okay. But you know what I mean. If if you know you're drawing like 300 amps, don't put a 10 amp you know meter on it, right? Use it. Yeah. You know, there's clamping ammeters for for testing higher amperage values so you don't light yourself on fire. Okay. I, I exaggerate and I kid, but look, you know. Don't play with voltages you aren't comfortable with. Understand if you open up a television, it's a giant capacitor, it stores voltage, and it will zap you. Um, you know what I mean? We can't cover all of the, the rules, yeah. but generally speaking. Read your manual, be yeah. safe. Go cautiously. <laughs> yeah. Is that it? I think that's it. Oh my goodness. So do us a favor, please subscribe, uh, youtube.com slash D-I-Y-T-R-Y-I-N, or revision3.com slash die trying. At, uh, well, Twitter is at die trying. Uh, and you can email us. DIY tryin no G at revision3.com. What are we doing next week? I don't really want to go into what, it involves urine probably. Are we doing the emergency urine battery? We might be doing it. We have all of the materials to do it. I just. All you need is a bucket and a dream. 
Turn it out. And suddenly I'm watching Yogi Abigail.